Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit on Tropical Storm Ian for Thursday, September 29th. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. This is Tropical Storm Ian, now uh, not a hurricane anymore as it weakened during its crossing of the Florida Peninsula, obviously bringing a lot of devastation on its path due to storm surge, extreme wind over 100 miles an hour, and extreme rainfall, over 20 inches of rain along portions of this corridor over Florida, and the rain hasn't stopped yet in uh, places in northeastern Florida. So we're continuing to see impacts today. Winds continue to be quite strong along the coast. We've had gusts over 60 or 70 miles per hour in places like Daytona Beach, and we continue to see potential for power outages and also storm surge flooding along the eastern coast of Florida due to all this onshore flow continuing to pile up water. So the danger has not passed yet, uh, but the center of Ian has moved out uh, east of Cape Canaveral, and stop me if this sounds a little familiar, but it continues to track a little bit to the south of forecasts over the last 24 hours. So we've seen it come up across the Florida Peninsula a little bit quicker, uh, closer to 18 hours spent over land instead of 24 hours, and this has both good and bad consequences. Uh, the good is that there will be slightly less rain in total as this starts to move out into the southwestern Atlantic. Uh, it's not still over land dumping rain over places that have already seen a lot over central Florida, so that's some good news. Uh, the bad news is that it will have a little bit more time now over water as it loops toward the north, uh, toward South Carolina, and may allow for some re-intensification as the storm curves toward the north. One thing to note here on the radar picture is that most of the rain, as we expected, is on the north side of the system, and we see a pretty dry southern half. There's a lot of dry air wrapping around, and you can actually see this field of stratocumulus cloud to the southwest of Florida. There's very cool air being wrapped in, which is causing these clouds to form over the warm water, and that cool and dry air has wrapped all the way around into the southern and eastern side of Ian's circulation. So at this point, it is embedded within the guts of the system, and this will help prevent thunderstorm activity from redeveloping all the way around uh, the, the TC center uh, in a symmetric fashion. And we do have some southerly flow aloft, some shear remains, which will continue to make the north side of the system the beefy side in terms of rainfall and strong wind. In addition, I want to point out, Ian is entangled with a cold front at this point in time. You can actually see outflow boundaries right up here, denoting the exact boundary of the cold front up at the northeastern part of your screen. You can even see some northeasterly flow off of the mid-Atlantic coastline. This is cold air, very cold air in uh, some places uh, on the north side of this front, and this frontal boundary runs all the way down toward Jacksonville. There's very low dew points over the southeastern U.S. right now. You can probably feel that outside today. And because of all this cold air to the north of this frontal boundary, Ian will be pushing a lot of more moist air up and overrunning that boundary, causing a lot of rain. And you can see this huge cloud field indicating the very large area of rain that will extend from Georgia through South Carolina and North Carolina and even points farther north into Virginia over the next couple of days as the center of Ian makes its way toward the Carolinas over the next 24 hours. This is the 500 millibar chart from the GFS showing where Ian is near the Space Coast this morning. And the steering influence really comes down to the remainder of this upper level trough, which is what helped turn Ian into Florida in the first place. This trough is in the process of exiting toward the northeast. And we have the steering ridge, subtropical ridge to the east, which will be nosing farther northeast as this trough exits. So you'll see that this trough kind of pulls out. You see it get thinner and weaker here. And so this ridge starts nosing in and starts pushing in more toward the north as opposed to the east-northeast motion that we've seen this morning. So we are expecting a northward move toward the coastline of South Carolina. You can see the trough is fully gone 24 hours from now, and Ian is now moving almost due north. The exact landfall point here uh, right now, the NHC forecast is pretty close to Charleston. I will note that the GFS has started to shift a little bit further up the coast, probably because the initial position has moved a little bit farther to the east. A lot of models were having it swing up north of the Space Coast like this, but we can see Ian departing a little bit more toward the east. Now, we don't, we don't really expect these departures to continue to an extreme degree because the steering flow is pretty mapped out at this point. This ridge is here to stay, and so a turn toward the left is going to happen here, but there could be a slight shift up the coast, maybe even closer to Myrtle Beach by the end of it. 
uh, depending on how short-term motion trends go here. Now, if we look at the 10 meter wind on the GFS, we'll see the surface flow. And here's that cold front that I, I talked about and all the strong northeasterly flow on the northern side of that cool and dry in general, but it also piling up a lot of water along the southeast coast right now. And as Ian moves up, it's going to start pushing out of the southeast as well, really piling up the water along the coastline. And so storm surge is a concern along coastal Georgia, South Carolina and North Carolina. And you'll see the system move up here. Here's the cold front still kind of entangled with it. And uh, the circulation moves up again, somewhere between Charleston and Myrtle Beach on this run. You'll notice the pressure value there, 979 millibars on the model. Right now it's coming off in the upper 980s. So it is going to deepen a little bit. It is over warm water here. The Gulf Stream is warm. So there will be some renewed thunderstorm activity. But like I mentioned, there is a lot of dry, cool air now getting into the southern half. So we're not really expecting the full re-emergence of an inner core with a ring of thunderstorms forming an eye wall and that kind of structure. Uh, that would be a little surprising to see here, given all the sheer and dry cool air that has gotten into the system. In addition, the circulation is a little broader now. If you look at the radar picture, if you just kind of visually map the rotation rate, you'll see that the, the wind in the center here doesn't seem to be a whole lot stronger than the wind like 60 miles out from the center. And the fact that there's no well-defined wind maximum close into the center of the circulation indicates that there's a broadness to the wind field that probably means it will take time to tighten up and become stronger again. And since we're only talking about 24 hours between now and the next landfall in South Carolina, it's likely not enough time to fully tighten up. And we have all this cold front, uh, dry air stuff going on and wrapping in will likely limit intensification. But nonetheless, some increase in maximum winds is possible. And at this point, maximum winds assessed by the National Hurricane Center are about 70 miles per hour. That's just shy of hurricane threshold of 74 miles per hour. So it is possible that Ian will be flirting with a hurricane designation again as it comes up toward the Carolinas. And so tropical storm force or even hurricane force winds are possible here. Power outages will be a problem across a large swath of the southeastern U.S. and rainfall and storm surge uh, will really be the, the big problems here in terms of flooding along the coast and points inland. This is the National Hurricane Center forecast and one of the big things to point out right away is this yellow region. Very broad area now of strong winds over 40 miles per hour due to that cold front causing a lot of northeasterlies well to the north of Ian's center and then combining with Ian's circulation, we have this large region where strong winds exist. You'll note that we still have a tropical storm warning along the uh, Florida coastline and the Georgia coastline, and now a hurricane warning along the entirety of the South Carolina coastline. And it is worth noting here that uh, we're not talking about a compact area of the strong winds anymore like we were at landfall. It was that 30 mile wide eye that had the vast majority of the wind. In this case, the system is now a fair bit broader. So no matter what the exact track of the center is here, there could be a broad area where really strong wind happens along the coast no matter what. Uh, but in terms of storm surge, the location of the landfall could matter here in terms of where the surge is maximized along the South Carolina coastline. Right now, the forecast is for a landfall near Charleston. So we look at the peak surge forecast from the National Hurricane Center, and that section of coastline is where the maximum values of four to seven feet reside. If we do see a shift in the track a little closer to Myrtle Beach, for instance, we could see this three to five foot value in uh, Northeast South Carolina and Southern North Carolina go up a little bit. So we could see some shifts in that coastal flooding expectation. But you, you see the message here, there is coastal flooding coming over a broad area of the southeastern US due to this massive area of northeast and then southeast flow combining to push water into this general region. And again, we talked about the rainfall. Again, because of that cold front blanketing this area, we have a lot of cool air in here with warm, moist air getting pushed up by the tropical storm. And so we are going to see a broad region of rainfall totals that could exceed four to six inches over a wide region from South Carolina to North Carolina. And again, even points north into Virginia, all these regions southeast of the Appalachians could receive uh, rainfall that could cause flash flooding. There's at least a moderate risk over portions of South Carolina as forecast by the Weather Prediction Center. You can see we're not quite done with rain in northeast Florida yet either. There is still rain falling and flash flooding potential remains high in portions to the northwest of the storm track today and high wind and storm surge continue to lash 
northeastern Florida as long as Ian remains close to the coastline. So that's about it for this video. Uh, I really hope that everyone in Florida has a quick recovery and that everyone in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia are prepared for the impacts that are still coming. We are not done with Ian, unfortunately, and we have at least another couple of days to deal with the impacts from this storm as it curves up toward the north toward its third landfall of its lifetime. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.